Imagine signing a contract to buy something for a certain price. And when you actually go to take possession of it, the person selling it to you said, mm, I thought more about it and I know we signed our names on the dotted line, but I don't think that that's fair. I'm going to ask more. You're going to have to pay double what I, what I was going to charge you. We, we'd all think that that's ridiculous and we'd say, we signed a document. If you don't agree to the price that we assigned on, I'm walking. I use that to illustrate uh, a point that we're going to look at today in Genesis chapter 17 about the fact that God does not change the stipulations of covenants. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit in believers and we're looking specifically at the fact that he has put us into Christ and that there are uh, relationships in Christ to uh, things that sometimes we might be amazed at. And one of them is uh, a covenant that God made with Abraham. Think about that. That's 30, that, or yeah, that's, no, that's 4,000 years ago. I had to redo the math in my head. That's 4,000 years ago that God made this covenant contract with Abraham. And yet it has relevance to you and I today. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15, we come over here because Paul gives us a snippet of covenant law. Namely, brothers, I am using a human illustration. No one sets aside a covenant. So if you've signed a covenant, agreed to it, you, you don't tell somebody if you're going to be making payments, you just don't decide, I'm not going to make payments on that anymore, but I'm going to keep whatever it is I bought. No. You signed your name. You made an agreement. So you don't just set it aside. Neither you do make additions to it. You don't come along uh, and say, oh, you're going to pay me more than what we agreed on. No, you're not going to do that. You don't make additions to it, even though it is a human covenant that has been ratified. Now, the promises, and notice these contracts, these, this covenants involve promises, promises from God to specifically Abraham, were spoken to Abraham and to his, to his seed, or to his, his great-great-grandkids. And we're going to see eventually a connection you and I have to this. And he does not say unto seeds, plural, as though referring to many, but referring to one. And to your seed, who is Christ. And we've been looking at the fact that we saw a covenant in Genesis 15 and a covenant in the first part of Genesis 17, both of which have plural pronouns referring to the seed, they and them. Now, some of you, are, you're not going to notice it because some English Bibles still translated he, but most of them, I think, are fairly honest and try to translate it uh, uh, they or them. But in Genesis 17, we're going to a second covenant now, or a third, technically, covenant God makes with Abraham. In Genesis 17, 9, it says, And God said further to Abraham, Now is for you, you shall keep my covenant. And this word keep is a Hebrew word shamar to, to guard. You're going to guard my covenant. There's something, you have a responsibility here. Now up to this point, this, these covenants that God's made have been one-sided. God's taken responsibility. He promises it. But now he's going to add a, a, a condition that you have something to keep. And if this is the same covenant he made in Genesis chapter 15, he, God just made an addition to this covenant. But he's not making an addition to that covenant. He's making another covenant. See, if you have to add a condition, this has to be another covenant because it cannot be the same. Otherwise, you're adding to it. He says, to you and your descendants after you throughout and there, it's important to notice, throughout their generations. Now, this is the covenant which you shall keep or guard between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. I don't think we need to explain that. I trust you all understand what he's talking about. A physical mark in the flesh. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be the sign. So this is going to be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations a servant who was born in the house or who was bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your descendants, a servant who was born in your house or who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. Thus you shall, thus shall my, my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting or a long lasting covenant. But an uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the foreskin uh, or the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut 
off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Now, what he's saying here is God made a, a covenant promise to Abraham, and it was to Abraham and to his descendants. This covenant is not adding a stipulation to that covenant. What it is saying is that he's making a new covenant, and this covenant is going to define who are the descendants of Abraham that are able to inherit that covenant. The first covenant, he simply says, this is Abraham, this is to you, and it's to your descendants. Now, he's telling, these are who the descendants are going to be. Because if they are not circumcised, then they are cut off from that person is cut off from his people. If he's cut off from his people, then he's not among those people who are going to get to inherit that land. They're separated. They're cut off from those people. And they can't inherit it. And he has broken my covenant. If, however, as we've already stated, if, however, we treat this just as another facet of those of the, the two covenants we've seen, the one in, in Genesis 15, at the end of the chapter, and the one at the first part of chapter 17, if that's the case, then he is making an addition to those covenants. And God won't do that because he had the Apostle Paul in, in Galatians 3 tell us, you don't set aside a covenant and you don't add to it. A covenant is what you get. The contract is there. God made that promise. And I know at this moment, aside from maybe learning a little bit about these covenants, it, this doesn't seem maybe particularly practical for us as New Testament believers, but trust me and bear with me, this will be practical. And the biggest reason, make this clear at this moment, the biggest reason I'm taking the time to go through this is to demonstrate that God made more than one covenant with Abraham. And secondly, that we are not a part, we do not inherit with respect to these three covenants at the outset. There's going to be a fourth covenant that God is going to make, and we're going to come back, and we will look at that covenant, we trust, tomorrow. And we will understand a covenant that we are related to. And then eventually we'll go back to Galatians and flesh that out and see how Paul says we are related to that. We. We want to understand our relationship to God. We want to understand what God has promised us. And we want to understand how he puts all of this together. Because it's going to make a difference in the way you think about yourself and the way you think about others. And it's going to be one of those things that when you're able to wrap your mind around this, come to a little appreciation of it, you can have a good day in the Lord. As always, thank you so much for joining me today.